Senate and House of Representatives resume plenary. Issues of national concern top agenda. House Committee on Health calls on the federal government to employ more health professionals to address shortage of manpower. Plus, Taraba State House of Assembly promises quality legislations to enhance good governance. Good evening and welcome to Parliamentary News. I am Praise Unwachuku. Senate and House of Representatives have resumed plenary this Thursday after the salad break. The two chambers have constitutional power to regulate its sessions, thereby dealing with national and constitutional issues, hence the bringing forward from the initial July 2nd. The chambers on resumption will deal with issues concerning oversight on the appropriations and clear further the hanging issues of constitutional and electoral concerns, clear outstanding bills and motions expectedly before annual recess later in the year. Mixed reactions trail the proposed amendments to the Police Act proposing review of the service years of police personnel from 35 to 40 years in service and 60 to 65 years as retirement age. At a one-day public hearing on a bill for an act to amend the Nigeria Police Act 2020 and related matters, the House Committee on Police Affairs received submissions from divergent views National Assembly Correspondent Muhammad Rabi Ali reports. The public hearing came as a result of a bill sponsored by Speaker Tajuddin Abbas and moved by the Chairman House Committee on Police Affairs, Abu Bakr Maiki el It aims at retaining experienced personnel and reducing the cost of training and recruiting new officers by increasing service years of those in service. The proposed amendment also seeks to improve moral performance and job satisfaction in addressing the shortage of experienced personnel and related matters. Extend the retirement age of police personnel from 60 to 65 years, or extension of service from 35 to 40 years, offer a wide range of benefits from leverage experience, talent, and enhancing community relations to improve operational eff effectiveness and reduce costs. If this bill is allowed to succeed, we will end up setting a bad precedence for other agencies such as the military and other paramilitary agencies who will also advocate for same. Police personnel are usually recruited annually. At the point of entry, they are not of the same age. They do not retire at the same time. That is our observation. Therefore, there can be no question of depletion of experienced personnel in the Nigerian police force. The extension of the seven years of Nigerian police officers offers a unique perspective on the complexity of modern day policing. Crime governance in the 21st century demands strategic police crime management expertise and tools. The retention of officers above 35 years of service or above 60 years of retirement would introduce a further blotting of the wage B, which may destabilize the national economy with the attendant serious consequences for the funding and mandate stroke operation of the Nigeria Police Force. Members of the committee acknowledge the submissions brought forward and promise to make judicious use of the recommendations in the interest of Nigerians. Retaining experienced officers is crucial for maintaining institutional knowledge, enhancing operational effectiveness, and fostering a culture of professionalism within the police force. How will you feel if you have your wife or husband in the hand of terrorists? How will you feel? So it's not something we can take for granted. It is critical to the development and strategy of the Nigerian police force. As such, the committee cannot unilaterally decide on the proposed bill. The committee is expected to report back to the House of Representatives for further deliberations. From the National Assembly, Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTNews. The importance of positioning women as key contributors to solutions and interventions aimed at overcoming bias and negative perceptions in the society from the thrust of a one-day women development discourse. The event was organized by the FCT Women Affairs Secretariat 
in collaboration with the Center for Gender Security Studies and Youth Advancement of University of Abuja, Amina Seydou reports. The pre-conference discourse on gender and human security focuses on women in the FCT who play a crucial role in nurturing and safeguarding society. It identifies women as primary caregivers, educators and community leaders who face challenges in the course of serving as bridge builders. For the women who want empowerment, they need to be empowered financially and so they are not. But if they are not empowered in the place of security, they are still vulnerable, they are still victims, they are prey for predators, not just of gender-based violence. We felt that as a university, we need to mobilize everybody to be part of this process. And so we're empowering our girls, we're empowering our men, we're ensuring that people who do wrong in abusing girls are punished. Such uh, security data have been decimated effectively. We are not saying that we are yet there, but taking into consideration the level at which when you compare with what we have previously at the early part of this year, you can say we can beat our chest to say that uh, a lot of success have been made. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Abuja, Professor Abdrashid Na'Allah, was singled out for recognition for his role in this direction. Participants agree positioning women at the core of security strategies and transforming societal perceptions will enable every woman in the FCT to live, work and thrive in a secure environment. From the National Assembly, Amina Saidu, NT News. The House of Representatives has made a case for steady power supply to Shedda Science and Technology Complex in Kwali Federal Capital Territory to support technological innovation of the country. But this was during an oversight visit by the House Committee on Science Engineering to the complex. National Assembly correspondent Muhammad Rabiu Ali reports. This is one among many hubs of science and engineering in Nigeria that are set to bring innovation and compete favorably with other developed nations. Lack of steady electricity supply and inadequate funding, among other impediments, affect productivity and the morale of staff. The visit by the House Committee on Science Engineering provides an opportunity to have first-hand information on challenges and what the management presented during the 2023 budget defense. From 1989, 93, when everything was set to now taking off, there was only one structure in Shesco. Up to 2009, all the centers in Shesco we are using one block, and some of the laboratories we are using only one room. And at the end of the day, you find that nothing was happening. Unless we come back to the drawing board, make our research institutes very, very effective, very, very competitive, well accommodated in our budget, well accommodated in engagement, exposed to other international best practices, the committee assured to provide the necessary support not only to Shedda Science Engineering, but to the sector in general. In Abuja, Muhammad Rabi Ali, NT News. The House Committee on Health Institutions has called on the head of service of the Federation to, as a matter of urgency, grant waivers to federal teaching hospitals and federal medical centers to employ more health professionals to address shortage of manpower experienced in such health institutions. The Chairman House Committee on Health Institutions, Amos Magaji, made the appeal during the committee oversight functions to federal university teaching hospitals and federal medical centers across the northwest and northeast geopolitical zones. Shehu Mohammed Dati reports. Against the backdrop of the challenges in the health sector, including the brain drain, where skilled medical workers are frequently leaving the country in search of opportunities abroad. This strained the doctor patient ratio in the medical centers and consequently overwhelming available workers. The visit of the House Committee 
is however to gather first hand information on the challenges. Chief Medical Directors while giving an overview of the hospital activities and its challenges, lamented over lack of structures, dilapidated existing structures, erratic power supply, high cost of diesel, and most disturbing inadequate manpower. Our facilities actually need human resource for health. Like FMC Brunonkudu, we have the least human resource for health in the country among all federal or the other federal tertiary hospitals. And uh, with this, therefore, we certainly need uh, uh, to employ more human resource for health. We have applied for the waivers and uh, therefore trying to uh, employ the necessary staff. Chairman of the House Committee on Health Institutions, Emos Magaji, promised that the committee would look into some of the needs highlighted noting that the committee is not in a vindictive mission, but as part of their constitutional mandate to ensure that things are done right in all the federal institutions. Institution will be looking for waivers on employment, and then an arm of government will keep it for many months without responding to it. We say no to it, and that should never happen in a country whereby uh, the manpower shortage, especially human resource for health, is becoming a problem. The House Committee visited Federal Medical Center in Guru in Yobe State, Federal Medical Center Azari in Bochi State, Federal Medical Center Birnokudu, and Federal University Dusi Teaching Hospital Jiga State. In Dusi, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. A bill for a law to prohibit and control parking on roads and highways in Edo State has received favorable deliberations from the 8th Assembly. The bill, which scaled second reading this Wednesday, seeks to regulate traffic and give legal backing to the prosecution of perpetrators of illegal parking in the state. Obehi Otobo Apresai has details of this and other state legislative issues. The majority leader who kicked off the debate on the bill for a law for the prohibition and control of parking on roads and highways in Edo State says it has become pertinent to reduce the lawlessness of parking indiscriminately, especially in Benin Metropolis, which has over the years caused avoidable accidents and loss of valuable man hour. Edo State government have expended so much resources in the development of parks, motor parks, and regulation of highways. As a result of which, Mr. Speaker, there is a need to have a clear cut regulatory system. The Speaker, while referring the bill to the Committee on Transport, expressed his displeasure with owners of refuse trucks that are abandoned on roads for days, thereby constituting environmental hazards. When you are traveling along the roads, you will see the way trucks they will break down the road. They will be there for 10 days. Within that 10 days, you will see the car running into that truck. Also today, there was a minor drama when the speaker, Blessing Agbebaku, directed the member representing Ego constituency, Natasha Osawaru, to exit the hallowed chambers shortly after the commencement of sitting for continuously defaulting on house rules, such as drinking during plenary and wrong dressing. A point of order was raised against her by the member representing Ikubaka, Nicholas Asonse. This happened to her since Sacred Home. I will not continue to accept anybody to be in the also, members of a non-governmental organization, Smile Africa Initiative, are seeking the support of the House in their campaign against the use of illicit drugs, especially among youths. They were received by the Deputy Speaker, Maria Edeko, who assured them that the Eighth Assembly is at the forefront in the efforts to sensitize their constituents on the dangers inherent in drug addiction and abuse. In Benin, Obehio Tuba Presai, NTA News. We will now go for a short break. Parliamentary News continues shortly.
The Ogun State House of Assembly has passed no fewer than 14 bills, out of which seven have been assented to by the governor, Dapo Abiodun, while over 24 resolutions were adopted for socio-economic development of the state. The Speaker, Olu Daisi Ilemide, who disclosed this at plenary in Abelkuta, urged residents of the state to expect more people-oriented legislations and facilitations of projects with direct and positive impact on their lives in the coming months. Parliamentary correspondent Yemi Dalemo reports. The lawmakers, spouses, and former speakers of the House who converge on the hallowed chamber appraised the performance of the Assembly in the last one legislative year, speaking glowingly on the impact of the Tenth Assembly on the socio-economic development of the state. The lawmakers unanimously commended Governor Dapo Abiodun for non-interference in their legislative oversights and creating an enabling environment for them to perform their duties. As a house, we have achieved remarkable milestones, including passing cutting bills, seven of which are still under processing. This assembly has passed well over 28 resolution, quality resolution that have direct bearing on fantastic legislative framework, good governance, efficiency, service delivery and accountability. I want to extend my profound gratitude to His Excellency Minister for Abiyono for his less or more interference in the activities of this chamber. Especially when we when there was a turbulence. The speaker Oluda is a lemide explained that each of the bills passed during the legislative year touches on the day-to-day -day running of government in the state and commended the governor for his efforts in turning around the fortunes of the state for better, while also imploring his colleagues to work collectively for the overall success of the current administration in the state. He started working relentlessly to meet the values and aspirations of the people of our state through various bills, resolutions, and community engagement, as well as other intervention programs to make life better for the people of our dear state. He thereafter led the lawmakers to visit the state governor, Dakwa Abiodu, who allocated farmlands to the 26 members of the State House of Assembly as part of efforts aimed at ensuring food security and in support of the initiative for agricultural revolution of the federal government. We must cooperate and support one another. This requires synergy between all arms of government without impeding each other's rights and processes. We must meet the yearnings and aspirations of our people and be honest with each other when necessary. The governor lauded the lawmakers for their commitment to the principles of democracy, good governance, and the welfare of the citizens. In Abelkuta, Yemi Dalimo, NTA News. A Kwaibom State House of Assembly has directed its Committee on Works to interface with the Ministry of Works and Fire Service to ensure that government intervenes in the deplorable state of roads and the breach in Insit Ibom and 89 local government areas of the state. And this is sequel to a motion raised by a member representing Insit Ibom State Constituency, Eric Akpan. Assembly correspondent Nsikak Okon reports. A motion titled, Urgent Need for Reconstruction of a Collapse Bridge and Rehabilitation of Edebon 1, Afarabia, Ikoro Biosanga, Ikoro Dion, and Ikoro Ekang in Nsiribum and Etinan local government areas. The member for Nsiribum, Mr. Eric Akpan, while raising a motion on the aforementioned roads and bridge, says the deplorable situation of the roads has led to lost of lives and property, lamented that socio-economic activities has been negatively affected. Mindful of previous inadequate effort to address the road condition, exacerbated the challenges faced by residents and businesses in the affected communities. There is deep the need to learn from past mistakes 
are committed to comprehensive and effective solution to ensure lasting improvement to this important bridge and road that connects to low government areas. The Speaker, Kwaibom State House of Assembly, Ude Motong, directed the House Committee on Works to ensure that the current situation of the aforementioned roads are table before the Ministry of Works to enable the state government make necessary budgetary provisions to capture the roads. to see the resolution number one and two of the motion and call the attention of governments to work on this project. In that division, we have those in favor say ah, this again is in the eyes of the Sika Okun, NTA News. The Itaraba State House of Assembly, under the leadership of John Kizito Bonzina, promises quality legislation as a legacy to bequeath to the next assembly and to enhance good governance, growth and development for the good people of the state. And this was the message by the Speaker after a successful first year in office. Godwin in Alego has details. The legislature of Taraba State began its journey on the 17th January 1992 after a successful inauguration of the legislative arm of government in the state. Taraba State is made up of 16 local government areas, 24 state constituencies and 168 council wards. Since the establishment of the State House of Assembly in 1992, the Assembly had 16 presiding officers, 192 legislators amongst whom five are female legislators. The 10th Taraba State House of Assembly, inaugurated on the 2nd of June 2023, elected Right Honorable John Kizito Bonzena as its speaker. Within one year in office, the speaker John Kizito Bonzena, performing his constitutional duties, mandate and obligations, thus contributing his quota to the good governance, growth and development of Taraba State. The Tenth Assembly, as currently being presided over by Right Honorable John Kizito Bonzena, has reinvigorated the activities of the legislator towards optimal performance, which undoubtedly rekindled the hope of theming Tarabans in the activities and functions of the legislature. I want to thank all of you, honorable members, for your contributions, for your concern, for your commitment to support the executive in making sure that the uh, sleep with their eyes closed. It is our responsibility to ensure that whatever information we want to share and present to the House that affects the security of our people are very factual because we are honorable members. It is expected that we present facts. With John Kizito Bonzena-led legislature, there is no dull moment as the House has so far initiated and passed four bills into law with over 10 at advanced stages of legislative processing. The bills passed into law have already been assented to by the Taraba State Governor, Dr. Agbu Kefas. These bills include Taraba State Local Government Amendment No. 14 Law 2023, Taraba State Revised Appropriation Law Number no. 2 of 2023, Taraba State Appropriation Law Number no. 5, 2023, and the Taraba State Establishment of One Rotational First Class Chief and Three Third Class Chiefs Law Number no. 1 of 2024. The bills at advanced stages of passage into law include a bill for a law to amend the Taraba State University Jalingo Amendment Bill Number no. 2. Taraba State Judiciary Funds Management Law 2021, Taraba State House of Assembly Service Commission Amendment Law 2019, Taraba State Legislative Funds Management Bill 2021, Taraba State Maternity Benefit Establishment Bill 2023, and a bill for a law to amend the Taraba State Contract Agreement Processing Fees Amendment Bill No. 1. Others include the Taraba State Registration Business Premises Trades and Commodity Association Bill 2023, Taraba State Geographic Information Services Stages Bills 2023, 
Taraba State Electricity Establishment Bill 2023, the Taraba State Polytechnic Reenactment Bill 2023, the Taraba State Drugs and Medical Commodities Management and Supply Agency Establishment Bill 2023, the Taraba State Education Bill 2024, the Political and public office holders of the remuneration and other benefits bill 2024 and lastly the political and public office holders of the local government of the state remuneration and other benefits bill 2024 other legislative resolutions that are required for good governance stability progress and development of taraba state are realizable as all the 24 honorable members of the tenth assembly are ready and poised to doing just that and that's our package and parliamentary news this evening. Thanks for staying tuned. Do well to follow all our social media platforms scrolling on your screen. Once again, I am Praise Mwachuku.